So if you're new to turning, you may have picked up a five-piece chisel set from Shopsmith. Uh, these have been made for years by the company Buck Brothers, and they've been copied as well. You can pick up a set like that five-piece set from several other places. Uh, but the problem is, how do you sharpen? And if you're new to turning, you're probably new to sharpening chisels and gouges. So with a jig like this that Shopsmith introduced, it makes it very easy to keep the factory edge on four of the five tools, and it gives the correct edge to the fifth one. In this video, we're going to talk about this jig. Stick around. So this jig can be used for grinding or for sharpening. The difference being grinding is going to get us the shape that we would want to use, and sharpening is going to get it to the, uh, the fine edge that we're looking for. We wouldn't need to grind if the chisel is the proper shape. So one of the secrets there is be sure if you're sharpening that you're using a fine grit sandpaper. I've got 320 grit on here at this point. We'll see in a moment that this is used for spindle gouges. This point right here is used for skews. This is used for the Shopsmith diamond-shaped parting tool. This is rarely used, but can be used for sharpening or honing uh, shaper cutters. And over on this side, it's used to reshape a, a, a round nose scraper and then to create a burr on a round nose scraper. But this is going to install right here on the main table. And if we're sharpening or grinding a Shopsmith chisel to the original grind, we're going to set this at zero and tighten that down. Now, where do we position this? Well, I'm going to want to position it at a point where I've got some fresh grit. And if I wear that grit out there, I can slide it over and continue on. Now, that's only if I'm using it here in the slot on the main table. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Before we do anything, we do our five-point safety check because we want to make sure that nothing moves on us. So I'm going to check my carriage. Oh, and my carriage is locked. I'm sorry, it's loose. I'm going to make sure my table height is right. What is right, by the way? Well, right is where my tools are going to be hitting the disc at about the, uh, let's call it the 9 o'clock point. This is where the disc is heading downhill. So this jig was designed for sharpening this uh basic set of Shopsmith chisels. It's carbon steel, and they were manufactured by Buck Brothers. In fact, I think I might even have one of them here somewhere that says Buck Brothers on the handle. Yeah, here's one right here that says Buck Brothers. Uh, they made these chisels for a number of companies, including Sears, and sometimes they had somebody's brand name on them, and sometimes they said Buck Brothers. But they're decent chisels for getting started. So let's talk about how we would sharpen these. Um, if, I, if I were really going to use these, I'd hit them uh, with a wire brush first. But for the, the gouge, the gouge is going to be sharpened with the gouge laying in this little V block right here. And I would want to back this thing off because I'm really close to the center. There's a lot more abrasive way out here near the edge. And I'm going to bring that forward and rotate it around from here to here or from here to here. Now, it's very, very common as you do this because it's pushing you away as you go around from the corner towards the tip to uh, not pay attention and either not sharpen the back corner or to get yourself a, an off-centered uh, cut on the gouge. It really doesn't matter, but if it does, just pay attention to that grind. So it's going to go something like this. Uh, by the way, we're going to do this at a very slow speed. You'll notice I don't have my lower saw guard in place because that's just going to melt. And I've got a piece of plywood with a rare earth magnet recessed in it and now some torn up aluminum foil. But I, I use that down here below just to make sure I'm not getting hot embers uh, on my way tubes. So if what you're about to see seems a little displaced, that's because it's now about five hours later. And uh, I just found out that all the footage I filmed looks like this. So this is going to go, we're going at the slowest speed. It's going to go something like this. So as you can imagine, I get to do all that over again. So 
It'll be interspersed with some of the things I said earlier, but we'll see how this goes. One issue to be aware of is as you rotate this towards the tip, it's pushing the tool back a ways, which means when you're heading the other direction, you're gonna to have to push it in. So if I start here and roll it, it's gonna slide me away, which means as I rotate it around, I wanna to continue to push it back in. It's also quite possible if you grind this without paying attention to that, it'll move this center point off one way or the other. If it's off to this side, that's all right. You can just grind a little bit more off of that side. Also, apply pressure straight back into that V. Um, if you don't, you might wind up in the middle of the sharpening heading that way on the disc. Again, it's just going to grind a little bit of your heel away, but you don't want to do that. You want to have a nice bevel there to aid you in shearing. Now, if you put a lot of pressure against the disc, you're going to overheat and lose the temper, as they say, which is you're going to lose the hardness on this because it's not high-speed steel. What we're shooting for is we want a nice shiny surface that goes all the way out to the tip. Um, ideally, for the way that I use the, the gouge, I like to have that sharpened all the way back here to the heel as well, but that's not critical. What's important is that we're sharp all the way out to the tip. Now, if I run my finger along here, I can feel an ever so slight little burr. And the presence of a burr tells me that I have sharpened all the way up past that tip. So to remove this burr, you can use a, a rounded stone. Um, you, you can even turn with it. But that burr needs to really be gone if we're going to do some good shearing. But, but this, is, this is now sharp. Let's uh, do that again with the smaller gouge. The smaller gouge has a different feel to it as we sharpen this. Yeah, looks like we got some paint on here. So don't do that with your skew, but hey, we're going to sharpen our skew in just a moment anyway. But that's going to go something like this. It's designed for spindle gouges and the basic spindle gouges in the set. And we're going to bring this on forward and we'll attack that skew. Now the skew is one of those tools that I typically reshape the tip because I like a longer bevel on my skew. So uh, we'll see how this is going to go. When you lay this down into the V-block here, um, we're going to be making one approach with the tool facing uh, uh, upside down with the long point leading and then the other side we will do with the long point up and we're going against different sides of this little v block here um, I, I use my finger in here again just to keep some pressure against the side that i'm doing and i feel like i'm a little bit too far away here i'm gonna i'm gonna bring the quill out just a bit and let's take a look at this by the way, <laughs> everybody who's used this jig has accidentally pushed it with it in the wrong configuration. So uh, it's not the end of the world, but just kind of keep an eye on what you're doing and look at it before you turn it on. Just about that. You can see here that I've ground almost all of that old bevel off, except for down to here. 
But to get that, I actually have to grind all of the rest of that surface down past that point. And keeping it equal on both sides, I mean, I'm going to have to ground that on both sides. The parting tool is another one that I, I actually like a completely different shape to it. But we'll, uh, we'll slide this forward, leaving it set at zero. And bringing this part of the jig up to where it's going to allow us to engage the disc. So we're going to be running in this little, this little guide. There's a chance that that disc may want to grab and lift the handle. So I'm, I'm paying attention to uh, exactly what's happening back here. A little, little uh, movement I'm, I'm going to identify with my hand. So it's going to push down against this little V block here. Now, the most critical thing, though, is to keep this so that the tip of that point is running right down as we grind down the center, which is the fattest part of this diamond-shaped parting tool. If you grind too much off of one face and you end up getting the cutting edge on some place other than the widest point, it's not going to cut properly when it's parting. So this is part of the reason why I like a slightly different grind. Now, the other grind can be accomplished with this jig, but I think we'll save that for our follow-up video. The round nose shaper, when you take it straight out of the box, really has the wrong shape. Uh, scraping is done with a pretty blunt point and actually with a burr on the edge. The burr is the sharp edge that does the cutting. And so to support that sharp burr, and as we're scraping, we're scraping inside of a bowl that's going straight down, we want to have some meat behind that burr. So uh, this factory angle that's put on there by Buck is wrong. So part of this jig, or part of the purpose of this jig, is to add the correct shape to this in order to get support for that burr. So we're going to bring this again back to zero, lock it in place, and we'll back off my disc for a moment. And you can see how this one has actually had some grinding done to it to blunt the tip of it. Now, we don't want it to be 90 degrees, though. We want a little bit of angle. Oh, my gosh, look at the bend in this. Ooh, this one's been caught in something. <laughs> but we'll, we'll back this knob out. We want to put the, uh, the cutting side down. I pulled that back after locking it in, and I actually have a little more gap there than I need, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that gap by extending the quill. I do wanna have it start without it touching at all, and then, and then slide it forward. I want to get a burr all the way across that face and right now I'm catching the, the tip of it but not the side. So this needs to be ground a little bit more from where it's currently ground. So I'm going to go ahead again and push the quill forward ever so slightly. And we're going to do this once we have this uh, zeroed in and this is shaped properly it'll work perfectly every time. To remove it, we're going to loosen the knob quite a ways so that I can tilt this back and not draw the burr across this edge. Now right now I've got a very aggressive burr. I think I'm going to get rid of that burr like so. And now that I've got the correct shape, I'm going to go ahead and hit that one more, one more time. And this will give me the burr I need for turning. And 
that's all it will take. So by this point, the keen eye among you have noticed the problem. If I'm in the middle of turning, whether I'm spindle turning or faceplate turning, I don't have this table on my machine. So this grinding to the proper shape can happen prior to turning, but I can't do this with this jig on the main table while I'm turning. So there's a couple solutions. The first one is Shopsmith in the instructions of this jig tell you that you can bore some holes into the top of your extension table and mount your sanding disc on the back side of your headstock and put your extension table where my jointer is currently living. Now, the problem with their instructions is they have you drill holes and then fix it in place, which means it'll only work on one little spot on the sanding disc. Uh, I prefer to have that mobile, and so I don't do it, and I will show you what I do in the follow-up video. But let me show you my preferred way. Yeah, the six-inch belt sander is my preferred uh, approach to this. You can be turning along, turning a spindle, turning a bowl, whatever you like and you realize you need to sharpen something. If you're turning a spindle, you loosen the headstock, set the spindle down momentarily, slide things over here, connect to your belt sander. If you're turning a bowl, it can be right there while you do this operation. And we're connected to this table. Now the table needs to be set square. Jig is still set at 90 degrees, and you wanna be sure that you're using a fine belt. So let's pull this off uh, for the round nose scraper. Same deal, we're going back on here with it set at zero. Tighten it down. And again, we're gonna be taking advantage of the play that we have in this piece right here. So I'm gonna start by pushing it forward towards the belt. I'm gonna push the, uh, the scraper down against the belt, tighten it up, and now I'm going to pull it away. So if I turn this on, it shouldn't be touching. If I push forward in on it a little bit, and that's probably all it's going to take. Again, I'm going to loosen that up. <laughs> I mean, that's ready to go to town right now. And really one of the most beautiful things about using the belt sander is there's so much abrasive there that it tends to cut very, very cool. The heat is being drawn away from the cutting edge. It's really actually my favorite way of using this jig. So is that easy? That's my approach. Uh, there's a couple other tips and tricks that I left out due to time. 
We'll talk about those in the follow-up. So leave your questions, comments, and cheap shots down below, and I look forward to seeing you then. Make it a great day.